Hi, it's Dwyer. Gamblersadvisory.com, free site. Bettingangle.us, free site. It's February the 12th, 2019. Let's talk about a fight that blew up in my face. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You know what? Um, from time to time, I'll run into someone a little bit younger than me. And they'll ask me about the Mike Tyson era. Right? It's like Tyson is one of these champions who's bigger than most in terms of aura, in terms of impact. Well, let me just tell you. This Gervonta Davis, Hugo Ruiz fight is exactly how it felt during the Mike Tyson era. Now, it blew up on me. I got spanked. Let me wipe the egg from my face. I had the over four and a half rounds in this fight. You're watching the fight just like in the Mike Tyson era. Every second counted. In other words, you're looking at Hugo Ruiz. He goes over to the ropes. You're thinking to yourself, don't go over by the ropes. You know, it's like watching a, you know, horror flick. Right? Where there's a Jason or a Michael out there. And the person does all the wrong moves. Right? They go into the room with no exit. Right? They go into the place where they could get attacked and no one will see them. Right? Well, here, you go Ruiz. I, I don't know what this dude's doing. You go Ruiz decides that he's going to go to the corner. And let me just say, Gervonta Davis, at this point, is a Jason slash Michael figure. Right? So Davis is just hunting him down. Then when Davis gets to the corner, let's just say Hugo Ruiz doesn't make it out of the corner. He does not make it out of the first round. Now, I'm sore here. Right? I'm very sore. I'm going to vent a little bit in this video. Let me just say this. Just like Mike Tyson in the 1980s, who you understood was having problems outside of the ring. Right? Mitch Blood Green in a back alley in Harlem. Right? Uh, the whole Robin Givens situation. Right? Um, you know, Bill Clayton, Jimmy Jacobs out, Don King in. Right? Tyson was a guy who had some drama. This is during the championship run. Right? Now, here you have Gravante Davis. I'm not saying Davis has as much drama as Mike Tyson did, right? He's not fighting Mitch Blood Green in a back alley someplace. But wow, if there was ever a time. If there was ever a time to beat this guy, right? He's rusty. He's out the ring for 10 months or so, right? He just became a new father. You're figuring, hey, you know what? Um, this guy might be distracted, right? This guy might be into being a father, more so than some opponent, right? He trained for a different guy. He didn't even train for Hugo Ruiz. He's training for Abner Maris, who gets injured in training camp. So Gravante Davis isn't even ready for Hugo Ruiz. And of course, there were rumors all over the place about Gravante Davis's weight. So what does he do? He shows up. He doesn't make weight the first time. You hear that ridiculous excuse every guy who doesn't make weight makes. Right? Davis says, you know, the scale at the hotel was a little bit different than this scale. In other words, dude's cutting it so close that, folks, every ounce counts. Right? Every ounce counts. So you have a guy who barely make, made weight. Understand, he didn't make weight, by the way, after he stripped down. 
he had to then lose another two ounces which he was able to do in 30 minutes so Davis barely makes weight he's rusty you're Hugo Ruiz we said this in the pre-fight video Davis has a great left hand it's one of the best hands in boxing he can hit you up top he can hit you down low he's a southpaw in my opinion and I'm gonna disagree with Al Bernstein here Al Bernstein Boxing Hall of Famer, great announcer. I believe Davis's right hand, his right hook, is only good up top. Right? I don't see Davis with his off hand leaning in to throw it to your body that often. Right? Let me just say, too, if you have a southpaw leaning in to hit you with his off hand to the body, then good for you. Right? Because just do the logistics. That means the guy is here trying to hit you to the body. Your dominant right hand should be able to just come right over the top. That should be something you plan for. So, in the pre-fight video here, we talked about a few concepts. Right? I wanted you or Ruiz, check the pre-fight video, to stay in the middle of the ring. Folks, you know when you're fighting a Mike Tyson slash Gervonta Davis guy, and let me just say, Tyson much more two-handed than Davis, right? I'm paying Davis the ultimate compliment by putting him in the same sentence with Tyson, right? Davis, great puncher, explosive like Tyson, can lead with power shots like Tyson. Understand, though, Tyson... Both guys shorter, Tyson could bounce a bit more than Davis. Tyson could bounce underneath you, come up, and Tyson, two-handed, both hands, Tyson could hit you anywhere on your body. Right? Davis is a little bit different. I don't believe Davis is as sudden as Mike Tyson. But let's say in his weight class, he's certainly as concussive. So, I don't believe you need to be a Mensa candidate. I don't believe you need to be a PhD in boxing to know that if you're fighting Gervonta Davis, you need to block his left hand. Hugo Ruiz does. You need to block his right hand up top. You need to stay away from the ropes. Don't you? Also, you can't admire your work. You land a good shot, keep moving. You don't want to be in the pocket trading shots with a heavy-handed Gervonta Davis. Let me also say this too, and I don't believe you need a boxing PhD or any deep knowledge. You're at the weigh-in your opponent, who is rumored to have been living some kind of Ricky Hatton lifestyle, right? Some Roberto Duran lifestyle, right? Gained a lot of weight. Gained so much weight. Had to drain himself so much for the weigh-in. That understand, on fight night, Davis enters the ring weighing more than 141 pounds for a 130 pound fight. Right? Think about it. So, I'll just say this. You girl, we should have looked at him at the weigh-in and said, you know, I'm gonna dance for a few rounds. I'm gonna take this slugger into the later rounds. I don't have to go out and trade with him in the first round. Right? If his fitness is such a problem that he can't make weight on the first try, he can't make weight on the second try, then I want to get this guy to round six, round seven, round eight. I want him to be a little bit winded. I want him to try to find me in the ring. I don't want to be trapped over in the corner by the ropes. 
Isn't that what we discussed in the pre-fight video? Right? I didn't know Davis was going to blow weight initially. Right? But we all knew Davis was rusty. If you tracked him, you knew Davis just became a parent. Right? Well, let me just say this. Few things. And let's compare and contrast this fight with Shane Mosley against Floyd Mayweather. As I've said many times here online, the secret to Mayweather, right, it's the secret to him, is that he's a thinking man who, in my opinion, would outthink his opponent. So, Mayweather is fighting Shane Mosley. Where are they? Folks are in the middle of the ring. Right? They're in the middle. <laughs> They're in the middle. They're in the middle of the ring. Right? Mayweather, later in his career, I know he's over by the side of the ropes. Right? Um, you know, I understand their fights. Ricky Hatton, Marcus Maidana, where he's over by the side of the ropes. But understand, Mayweather's in the middle of the ring. He gets caught. He gets caught by Shane Mosley. And then Mayweather holds on. Right? He doesn't go back to the ropes or anything like that. Mayweather's in the middle of the ring. Mayweather gets caught. Right? It's probably the biggest punch Mayweather has taken in his career. In fact, he gets caught a couple of times. His knees buckle. Mayweather, again, it's a mental thing, doesn't back away, doesn't give Mosley the opportunity to trap him. He's holding Mosley's arm, holding it, not allowing Mosley to get off shots. Now here, you go Ruiz, who does block Gervonta Davis's right hand, right? Paulie Malignaggi, one of the very best boxing analysts out there, talked about how Ruiz had to show Gervonta Davis something to keep Davis from coming forward. Now let me just say, go back to the Mayweather-Baldemir fight. Mayweather was a guy who, as you tried to walk him down, would sometimes just stand there and have you walk into his shoulder. Right? Because Mayweather understood. I don't want this guy getting me up against the ropes. You girl Weez just doesn't have that. Here is Gervonta Davis trying to walk him down. That's as surprising as Mike Tyson trying to walk you down, isn't it? I mean, are you really shocked by that? Isn't Davis a knockout artist? Didn't Davis walk down Jose Pedraza for crying out loud? You know he's going to try to walk down a guy who is new to the weight class. So, of course, Ruiz decides not to stay there and force Davis into his shoulder and fight off at an angle where Davis has to reach with his dominant left hand. No, Ruiz starts moving backwards. Mistake number one. Starts moving backwards. Guess where he ends up? Up against the ropes. Just imagine you're Gravante Davis's trainer. Aren't you hoping the fight ends up there? Is there anybody in the Gravante Davis camp who doesn't want Ruiz up against the ropes? So Ruiz, as Davis is bullying him, doesn't clinch. By the way, by the end of the 1980s, Bone Crusher Smith, bunch of other guys. Razor Ruddick figured out. As Mike Tyson walked you down, you needed to clinch him. <laughs> you needed to stop him. You didn't want to back up, be up on the ropes, end up like Marvis Fraser. Hugo Ruiz just couldn't clinch. Gervonta Davis just couldn't clinch him. His whole game's just lateral movement. 
So then he gets off a really good right hand, right? It stuns Davis. But again, you're fighting a Mike Tyson character, so you know Davis's next step. He gets hit with the right hand. Davis then steps forward. He's ready to trade. Now at this point, I'm telling you a Bernard Hopkins who gets off a punch like that, I'm talking about the thinkers out there, would have grabbed him. Right? I don't want Davis getting revenge. Not only that, I need to be conscious of where I am. I just got off a good right hand. The ropes are right here. What's Hugo Ruiz doing by the ropes not clinching? What's that about? So then let's talk about the knockout. And I'm sore. I'm just venting. I lost my money, folks, on this fight. I had the over four and a half rounds. I thought the four and a half, given Ruiz's championship pedigree, right, given Ruiz's mobility, I thought the four and a half, that would have been an easy bet, especially given what I was hearing about Davis, right, being a little bit heavy, being a new daddy, right? Well, you know the rest. Davis throws some left hands, right? Ruiz blocks them. Then Davis throws a right hand up top. Right? Folks, why wasn't that punch blocked? If you know the guy has that weapon in his holster, and if you've put yourself in a position where you have nowhere to go, because the guy has you pinned up against the ropes and you're by the corner, Right? You tell me, why aren't you prepared to block that punch? Or at a minimum, why aren't you prepared to run into Gravante Davis to tie him up? You're in the wrong part of the ring, Holmes. You're too close to the ropes. So let me say this too. Ruiz gets hit. He goes down. He's shaking. There's blood coming out of his nose. I'm not saying he's not hurt. Right? What I am saying, though, is when you fight a Gervonta Davis, you understand that's the risk involved. Right? Davis is a puncher. Davis's fights usually end by stoppage. You understand if this guy who's accurate, lands on me, I could go down. Now the referee does everything possible to try to let the fight continue. He's talking to Ruiz. He's looking at Ruiz. Right? Ruiz gets off the canvas. All Ruiz has to do, and I'm serious about this, all he has to do is give the referee some indication that he wants to go forward. Keep in mind, it's not like Gervonta Davis is suddenly fit. This is still the same guy who needed three attempts to make weight at the weigh-in. Don't you get off the canvas and at that point say, okay, I need to stick and move the rest of this round Take the minute between rounds to clear my head and then take this guy a few rounds so he loses some of his power. I also need to correct my mistakes. This is what adjustments are all about. Right? I didn't block the right hand up top. It's Davis's offhand. I didn't I didn't block the right hand up top. I need to be in a position where I block that shot. And I have room to operate. I'm not up against the ropes. Just a simple decision to clinch the guy would have helped him. Right? Davis is coming forward. You realize, uh-oh, I don't have a lot of room here. Clinch the guy. Right? Let me just say too, Davis, while his punches are sudden, he is not sudden. 
right? In other words, Davis is walking you down. Folks, he's not hiding it. This isn't the guy who you look away for a second and he quickly positions. No, no, this is a methodical guy coming forward. So here's where we stand with Davis. I still believe, right, after this loss, I don't want to I don't want to come across here as a guy who won this fight. I did not. After this loss, I still believe that experienced guys looking at his films are going to notice that Davis likes things a certain way. Right? He stops Jose Pedraza almost in the same spot where he stops Hugo Ruiz, same part of the ring. I think a Vassal Lomachenko would know how to keep this fight in the middle of the ring. Let me also say too, you understand, as you move away from Davis's left, right, you need to have a hand up. You, you can't be with the ropes um, are and you know, give Davis a chance to go around your guard. No, you want to be moving with a hand up. So if Davis tries to throw that right hand, you have it blocked and you have a counter. Also, somebody tell me why Davis is so hard to clinch. Just like Floyd grabbed, literally grabbed Shane Mosley's arm. Even though Davis is shorter, I don't have to grab most of his torso. Can I come and grab his arm? Finally, I heard Davis talking about how he wants to fight more often. Right? Because, like Tyson in the 1980s, right? Tyson at one point was fighting, it seemed, every month. Right? Being in the ring keeps Davis focused, keeps Davis sharp. Well, my point to you, and I understand in boxing many people blow up between the weigh-in and the fight, but it's disturbing, right? It's disturbing that Davis already lost the title on the scales. Research his background. He already lost the title on the scales. And you mean to tell me that for a second time in his career, he has to lose weight after initially showing up at the weigh-in? Also understand, it's six ounces the guy had to lose. When I see a guy gaining this much weight, this much weight, right? He gains 11 pounds in a day after the weigh-in, right? That's a lot of weight to gain at 130, right? That's a lot of weight to gain at 130. So, to me, I'm going to question Davis's fitness. I understand the next guy he's going to fight is that guy who didn't make it out of the first round against Floyd Mayweather. Right? Davis is not exactly fighting the Vassal Lomachenkos of the world. Let's be real here. Right? Davis, even Abner Maris, wasn't a guy at 130. Right? Davis was to fight a guy who was coming up to 130. That guy gets injured, so Davis fights another guy who's coming up to 130. Right? Davis's next fight is going to be against a guy who no one has seen fight the top contenders. When you see this, and I'm serious about this, especially since Davis is promoted by Mayweather, right? Especially since Floyd himself. I want you to look at Floyd's history. By the time Floyd was Gervonta Davis's age, he had already taken Gennaro Hernandez's title. He was already deep into his career. 
because Mayweather himself came up fast. The fact that the promoter is hesitant to put Davis in with a lot of lions should tell you something, especially when you're hearing about Davis gaining weight between fights. Right? I have Davis after this loss that has me bitter here online on my bubble list. Right? He's a guy who has everything going for him right now. Just like Tyson did in the 80s. Right? Has everything going for him right now. Except a work ethic that would have him keep the titles he's won without losing them on the scale. That would have him comfortably making weight. Right? This fight's a little bit of an illusion. We know Davis was fit to rumble for one round against a guy who is new to the weight class and decides he's going to spend his time over by the ropes. Right? I'd like to see Davis against a guy with a strong core who can grab him. Who's not going to be trapped by the ropes. Who understands positioning and who's going to keep the fight in the middle of the ropes at least for the early rounds. Middle of the ring. At least for the early rounds. So we can actually see Davis in the second half of a fight. Right? I give Davis all the credit in the world for beating Pedraza, for traveling across the ocean, beating the British fighter over there. Right? But Davis now has been fighting soft touches. What is it about? I believe his name is Nishikawa or some name like that. What is it about the guy who Floyd just beat in the first round? that has anyone clamoring to see him against Gervonta Davis. Right? If a fight were announced today, Davis against Lomachenko, I would take Lomachenko. Because I think Lomachenko moves too well, is ambidextrous, and wouldn't be caught over by the ropes by a right hand up top. Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me congratulate those of you, and there were several of you, who left comments in the comment section to the pre-fight video saying, Dwyer, you're crazy. Gavante Davis is going to walk him down and then blow him out. You were right. I was wrong on this one. I was surprised. Hugo Ruiz just didn't fight the kind of, we'll call it Floyd Mayweather type fight that I was hoping he would. I think Davis is a little bit robotic. I think his legs give away his agenda. I think it's telling that Ruiz is able to land a very nice straight counter right in the first round. Davis, to me, is not defensively blessed. As dominant as Davis looks. And let's face it, if you're a fighter and <laughs> the over-under is four and a half rounds, one of the guys in that fight is viewed as a serious knockout king, right? As dominant as Davis looks, I think he's vulnerable. I think that left hand is A+, plus, but I think it can be neutralized by movement. And I don't think Davis, who does throw a sweet right up top, a right hook, right? I don't think Davis's jab is that good. I don't think Davis can throw that right to the body. One man's opinion. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comments section of this video. And if you want to call me bitter, go ahead. I plead guilty. Thanks for stopping by.